We are live. Welcome back for another amazing webinar. Tonight's topic, man, is a special one with a special cat on a special passion to a special prophet. What is up? And welcome back to Mr. Arturo Johnson. What's up? What's up? Can you guys hear me? Okay. It look like my microphone is working. So give me two seconds. Yeah. Make sure this yeah. is Dude, we hear you. you guys hear him loud and clear, man. Let him know in chat if you can hear him loud and clear. Vernon says, yo. Okay. Yo. All right. All right. So I know I sound probably a little bit better now. Perfect. Well, I'm yes. excited. Excited to be here. Um, let's see. We got a bunch of folks in the chat. So I'm excited to get going. Um, yeah, man, me too. Hey, let us know where you're watching from as, as Arturo's getting set up and, and Randy ready to rock and, and, and roll and ramp. Um, Katina's in Chicago. I was just on with Katina, man. Matt's in Cali. Johnny's in Tulsa, Cali, California as well. Again, I'm in Missouri. Arturo's in Nash, Vegas, Nashville. Yes. Dude, I love Nashville, man. I'm a big fan of Nashville now. Like, it's one of my favorite places, seriously. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Um, One of the better times I've had, I think this is probably the fourth or fifth mastermind. And I think uh, this one, you know, by far took the cake. We had some great times. And so, um, you know, I learned a lot more about, you know, how important your network is. And I was thinking through this as I was kind of leading up to this, what I want to talk about. And it's one of those things where if I pulled you over to the side and said, you know how they say your network is your net worth. Mm. If I put you over, if I, if I woke you up out of bed at 3 a.m., put a gun in your head and said, tell me the five closest people around you and add up those people in your network and what their net worth is. Mm. What would that add up to? That's the good. five people that are around you, right? Are you hanging around the right people? pretty deep question right because it's kind of ruthless it's like you know if you're trying to go somewhere are you where surrounded by the right people um there's a millionaire he said <laughs> this is very interesting a millionaire and a billionaire are having a conversation and the billionaire asked this guy he says if you lost it all cody right may you may you know made some pretty good money online if you lost it all what would you do He's like, oh, the millionaire's like, man, you know, if I make, I made my first million, this is the hardest. If I needed to, I can just get back on my grind and I'll just start all over and I just do it all over again. I've, I built it once, I can build it again. And that's probably what the billionaire expected. And the millionaire was like, well, what would you do? And the millionaire goes, the billionaire goes, I just call my friends. Right. And so it's one of those things that like he didn't need to start o over. He has a billion dollar network of people. Mm. that if he needed to start over, if he needed resources, he didn't have to start from zero. He could just make a few phone calls, right? Maybe a few favors, maybe a line of credit, whatever it is. Hey, let me X, Y, and Z. Hey, you want to start this new company? Maybe uh, I got this new idea. You want to do this joint venture, whatever it is, you know, having that. And so surrounding yourself with people, right, that are going in the same direction. But again, your network is your net worth. You know, count it up. And if it's if it's pretty low, it's directly correlated to your income for sure. So um that transitioned to me talking about passion to profits. And I've really been studying a lot of coach. I just got off a call with coach. And probably one of the pro most profound things is when you learn something and you're, you know, I'm 40, right? When you learn something at 40 years old that you never heard before, it's it's usually profound. And one of the things I learned is that the word passion means to suffer one of the definitions of passion is to suffer right and so the question is what are you willing to suffer for what are you willing to sacrifice for to to get your goals what are you willing to give up in order to make room for the success that you're trying to have right because i talked about this at our mastermind is success and your goals don't care about what you already got going on right coach's probably got a big dream or he's you know looking at an office it doesn't care that he's in the middle of doing eight percent doesn't matter that he's got 13 uh, shows to go on in the next two weeks. Success knocks on your door and they want to know, are you ready? And it doesn't care what you got going on. And so the, the purpose of this call is, to, and I won't be for you long, maybe 30 minutes, um, is to share, show you guys how to turn your passion into profits, right? People who buy and leads, how to get off the hamster wheel of, of buying leads and start attracting people to you in that fashion. So, 
Um, I'll kind of run through. I got a little um, non-tech place I'm going to share. It's just a, a Google Doc, and I'm going to just walk through some of this with you guys, and then uh, we'll take some questions, and then we'll get out of here. I promise I won't be too long-winded for you. And so th this is really a strategy on um, that drives – uh, it works on Instagram, Facebook. It pretty much works anywhere, but I really just want to talk about these because these are some of the ones that I use the most. Um, and so some of the results that we're able to, to achieve is we're able to take people from 10K a month to 50 and 100K in issue pay business. So who this really works well for are people who sell uh, final expense or mortgage protection, Medicare, health insurance, um, put, a, put a one in the chat if you mainly sell IULs. Put a two in the chat if you mainly do mortgage protection, um, or final expense, and then a three if you do Medicare or health insurance. See who we got in here. All right, all right, all right. So this applies to all of that. Um, perfect, perfect, perfect. Appreciate the participation. So <clears throat> just a little backstory about myself real quick. I won't be too long, but this is a great story, and I love hearing it. So um, this is me in the office and over here is me coaching up some of the top agents in the industry. This guy right here in the, in the maroon shirt was the number one agent, number one producer for mutual home Omaha in 2022. Then the average income of these guys is about 30 K per month. And this guy was doing about a, at the time when I took, this was my very first mastermind. Actually, Kevin Alexander was doing 120,000 final expense and I, and extra final expense and IULs a month. And I took this image over here. This is probably one of the last days I was in the office because I knew I was about to really blow my business up because I had really figured out what what uh, what my passion was. And I had sacrificed a lot of things just to be in this position. You see, and when I was an agent, I was struggling so bad that in like the first nine months, I almost um, got a divorce, um, I almost lost my car, and I had to figure it out. And I suffered every day trying to figure out, man, if I could just figure out how to generate quality leads to have people chasing me instead of the other way around. Once I get done with that, I'm looking around this office where everybody's cold calling um, and chasing people as opposed to attracting people. This is going to be a game changer. And I knew um, this is going to make me rich. So once I figured it out, right, you can see here, this was just one of the, the documents that, that they showed of my production. I mean, excuse me, activity. So in 21 days, I made 93 meetings. I kept 50 of them. So the gut is basically your show rate. I only dialed like 143 people. Um, and then I sat with the average of 80 person who made 85,000. And um, I closed 12 of those sales. Now, when I was doing insurance, I was selling, I think my very first policy was a $500 per month policy. So I was already selling um, high ticket insurance. And I got started back in 2004. And I started with Aflac. So I can remember it was Jan uh, December the 24th. It was Christmas Eve uh, of 2004. I was waiting tables um, at the Hilton downtown Nashville. And my friend Mary Miriam Mizera came in and she had a business suit on. I was like, man, I just love the way everybody looked at her. And I was like, I don't know what you're doing, but, um, you know, I, I loved your presence and I want to be a part of it. So she's like, yeah, we'll come to this meeting. Lo and behold, it was a recruiting meeting for insurance and it was for Aflac. And so that's kind of how I got started. And the reason why I remember December the 24th is because I drove from Nashville to Chattanooga to take my test. And that was the longest ride back because I was so excited that I didn't really study hard for the test. I just thought I was going to go down there and pass it. And I failed half of the test. Right. And it's funny how, um, you know, things that happen in your past seem to be for a reason. And what happened is, is I failed the health portion of the insurance exam. And in that, in Tennessee, if you fail one portion of the test or you fail the test, you got to wait 30 days. You got to pay again until you can take the test again. So for the first 30 days of my insurance career, I couldn't sell health insurance. And if you have know anything about uh, AFLAC, right, that's pretty much all supplemental health uh, and accident plans. So the only thing I could sell was life insurance. I'm like, Hey, well, I got this other piece to the, to the insurance. Do you guys have any products for this? So the only thing I could do was learn and sell life insurance to try to, to pay the bills. And so that's what I did. And from there, I bounced around, I landed into some captive agencies. And it wasn't until 2015 that I figured out this whole social media and telesales game. And one day, 
I cracked the code and started teaching this new model to agents. Now, fast forward, right, to 2023, where I transitioned to working with some of the top agents in the game, like like uh, Kevin Alexander, like Jerry Rufino, um, Edwin, who's had a million-dollar agency twice and now has a, a CRM that helps agents out. I work with some of the top agents in the game and mainly know to Kevin Alexander, who went from doing 500K in a year to working with us and doing 500K in six months. Terrence Smith, who did 100K AP in 90 days. And then Todd Hausberger, who lives one exit up from me, wrote over 100K using the system in one single month. Pretty awesome, right? And so um, from then, I've been able to do some amazing things like be on stage to speak at SWAT, most notably to be able to share the stage with Cody Askins, Brad Lee, um, Eric Thomas, Andy, Boom! Eric, right? To be on stage. And this was probably one of the pinnacles um, thus far. And we're just getting started. Um, and, it, and the best is yet to come. Pro by far the best event I've ever been to. By far the most amazing people at this event. And, um, and so that's just kind of the beginning. So um, just to let you know, I'm qualified to kind of share with you all today. So my question is, do you ever feel like you're chasing leads? Put a seven in the chat if you feel like that's all you do is just chase leads. And so this is where I found myself back in 2015. And that's when I discovered that I need to just be more influential so that the leads would start chasing me instead of the other way around. And Jim Rome says, to attract people, you have to become more attractive. And when I heard that, there's just something about what Jim Rome says. He just got away with words, his delivery and that pause. And, you know, whenever he says something, it just lands there and, and it just kind of sticks with you. And this one really just resonated with me, which is to attract people, I need to become more attractive, right? I needed to become someone that was influential, become a center of influence, have some success, and then have a message to share. Does anybody else want to be more attractive? To stop chasing business and to have clients coming to you instead of the other way around? You recognize Bartura, I heard all the stories about you. Katina, I heard all the stories about you. Vernon, I've been hearing about the work and the service that you've been doing. Um, I reached out and asked some questions and, and, and some such and such gave me your information. I just wanted to see if I can get a chance to talk to you. And so it starts with this. Number one is influence. And I always like to define things so that we can get clear on the words. And so influence is the capacity to affect and shape the thoughts, actions, opinions, or behaviors of others. It involves the power to impact uh, to have an impact on someone's decisions, attitudes, perspectives through various means, such as persuasion, guidance, or control, right? And so you can use your influence for good or for evil. And in this particular process, we're going to use it for good. And so here are the three components that make up a successful person of influence. They need to have the right mindset. They need to have the right skill set and they need to have the right tool set. Now, I don't have a time to go into the mindset, skill set, and tool set too deeply, but I will, will share with you, in order to have the right mindset, you need to have the right perception. You see, most people focus 80% of on what's going wrong and only 20% of what's going right. If all people did was focus more on the problem as opposed to the solution, right, they would just get ahead. Most people walk around with their head down, looking at the scuff on their shoes, as opposed to looking up at all the opportunity that's around them. Everybody said we're in a recession. I just came back from Indiana and I'm driving down 65 going south. And all I can see is just tens of billions of dollars being poured into widening the interstates. Amazon's being put into uh, uh, in Kentucky, as well as if you've been in downtown Nashville, there's a crane everywhere, skyscrapers everywhere, and they're just being built. And so, again, it's, it starts with your perception. The next thing you need is the skill set. Probably the most important one, because most insurance and sales professionals think they're good. In their eyes, right, they're a legend in their own mind. So the only way for you to get good is practice. Practice? We talking about practice? Right? Some of y'all get that on the way home. 
But the way that you get good is through practice. They're saying that doing, you learn 13 times more than being in the classroom. So if it takes, in order to get the skill set, you need to have, you need to practice. When you practice, what happens is that you achieve mastery. So what is mastery? Mastery is to effortlessly, write this down, mastery is to effortlessly execute without the use of conscious resources. So when you're on a call as an insurance agent and you get, I need to think about it, or you get, I need to talk to my partner or spouse. These are the two objections that most beginner insurance agents can't overcome. And they just work so hard beating and chasing down leads that they get the lay down and they miss achieving the skill set by practicing and getting good at overcoming those objections. How amazing would it be is maybe 80% of the time, any time somebody said, I need to think about it, or I need to speak to a partner or spouse, you were able to overcome that, show them the value and what it is that you have, explain away their concerns, and then reinforce their decision to say yes with you on the call. Does anybody believe if they were able to do that nine to eight to nine times out of 10, that could probably produce more? Put a yes in the chat and put a no in the chat if you disagree, right? So you need to have the right mindset and then you need to have the right skill set and achieve mastery. The next thing you need to do is you need to have the right tool set. See, a lot of times what happens is, is uh, insurance agents are chasing their tail. They're going from lead vendor to lead vendor. They're going from mall to mall, networking event to networking event, avoiding the harsh reality is that they don't actually have a business. They're prospecting. And when you're prospecting, you're leaving your business growth up to chance. See, the, the most simple way to understand this is, is, is if leads are the lifeblood of the business and the person who controls the leads controls everything, it's safe to say that if you have a steady flow of leads, right, then the health of your business will be just fine. You see, in, in your business, if you double your leads, you can double your business, which would then turn into you having more appointments. And we just said that you need the skill set. So the more appointments that you do, probably going to get better. Then the chance from there is you need the, the more that you get better, you close more sales. So you double your closing percentage. And then the last thing is you need to hire somebody to help with your persistency to keep things on the books and to follow up with people who are missing paperwork. See, those four principles apply to an online business. They apply to insurance, Medicare, real estate, health insurance. Those are four principles that if you have in your business, lead automatic lead flow, lead generation, um, you double the amount of appointments that you're getting, you get good at sales to double your closing ratio, and then you um, have retention in your business. Those are the four principles to make every business grow. Is this making sense to y'all? I know I'm kind of going deep, but I want to make sure I'm giving y'all the value to, so that y'all understand there's levels to understanding how success works. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because these are principles. So if y'all are getting this, um, say I say spot on in the chat. I love it. Perfect. So what is a person of influence? The person of influence, excuse me, back up. So you need to have the mindset, the skill set, and the tool set in order to have influence. So then what is a person of influence, right? A person of influence is a go-to person for something. So the question is, what is your name synonymous with? Synonymous with? For myself, you know, touted the king of leads, Cody Askins, branding, marketing. He's synonymous for events, for um, bringing the insurance industry together, connections. He's synonymous for a multitude of things. So what, are you, what is your name synonymous? When they think about insurance, Medicare, uh, final expense, or IULs, when somebody says your name, somebody says Alexander uh, Sala, what, are you, what is your name synonymous with? Wayne, what's your name synonymous with? Kenny, what's your name synonymous with? You want to be known as the go-to person for whatever it is that you're doing. The name of the game is to be known. The most known wins. Grant Cardone says, if they don't know you, they can't flow you, right? So in order to take the next step, you need to become the center of influence. Everybody talks about this, your circle of influence, but you need to become the center of influence. Everybody comes to you as a connector. Like I said before to preframe this, your network is your net worth. Right? So who's in your network? And when you have the right mindset, the skill set, and the tool set, 
You're the go-to person. Now you are the center of influence. Is everybody getting this? Is this making sense? Right? So when we think about um, insur helping insurance, 92% of insurance agents fail. But well, who's helping them? Who's the go-to resource? I can remember 2015 laying on my couch as an insurance agent on a Saturday trying to figure it out, watching YouTube. Stumble across this skinny kid in a studio, cold calling leads, dialing and, and setting appointments and just absolutely crushing it. Well, who was that? That was Cody Askins, right? So when you think about a center of influence, right? He knows all of these people, the connector. Eric Thomas, Brad Lee, Andy Elliott, Coach Burt, John Wetmore, Edward Pritchett, the connector. He is a center of influence. And so how do you become a center of influence? I'll blow this up a little bit because I can't see. You know, I told you I was 40, y'all. Someone who solves problems. So the question is, is what problems do you solve? Well, the biggest problem that life insurance agents have is nobody knows who you are and what problem you solve. Remember, we just said that the most known wins, right? So the question is, is what problems do you solve? Coach Burt has a saying that money exchanges hands when problems are solved. So what problem do you solve? And an even better question is, are you solving, solving small problems or big problems? Are you chasing after the little problems for the little money and missing out on the big problems and the big money? So, when you're known, it gives you more opportunity. When you're known, it gives you more opportunity. When you're known for something, people will seek you out. Hey, Cody, um, I'm having an issue. I'm looking for private jet to, to take to do a VIP day that we're going to do. Can you connect me with somebody? Cody's known. Gives us an opportunity to do a joint venture together. Hey, Cody, I know you got this. Um, event going on. I'd love to be able to speak at it. Hey, Cody, I know you got this mastermind where you get all of these amazing people together. I want to be a part of it. When you know, and it gives you more opportunity. Hey, Cody, you do such an amazing event. I came to see you speak. Thousands of people in the room. I don't know how you did that, but I got to have you on my stage. When you know, it gives you more opportunity. Y'all getting this? So the question is, how do you become the go-to person as a center of influence that solves problems to be known for your opportunity? Well, the first thing we got to do is we got to find your talent. What are you good at? And what I realized over the last five to 10 years of my journey is that I'll overlook some of the initial talents that I had. See, um, as human beings, we tend to, um, to look over the things, the skills that we have, because we think that everybody has the same skills that we have and we take them for granted, all right? But the truth is, is God didn't make us independent. He made us interdependent. So the skills that I have aren't the same gifts that Alexander has. It's not the same gifts that Daphne has. It's not the same gifts that Pamela has. And what happens is, is all of those skills used together is, is, is called contribution. So the question is, we got to figure out what those are. And so we start with these questions here. This is the process. But I want you all to write this down. What is unique in your past? See, when I was younger, my mom was a single mom, was a nurse, and she worked 3 to 11. And then she would, she would uh, come home, pick me up, drive me back to school, and then she would go work at a daytime job as a social worker from 7 to 3. And then she would take a nap, and then we'd go to church. So I grew up in the church because I was a drummer for my church. So that part of my unique past is that I got mentored by my pastor. Well, as being a drummer, I've seen hundreds and thousands of presentations two or three times a week, just ingrained in my process, the way to be able to evoke emotion, to communicate. Because I had to be present. And I don't know if you have, you know, in a black church, it's on, it's participation. So there's a lot of moving and things going on. So I, I was, I had to pay attention. I couldn't just fall asleep. That prepared me for this moment here. To be on stage, to walk out when it was my time and deliver and control the room to have people focus on me. And at the time when I was a kid, man, I hated that. 
one of the worst things was when I was a kid coming to school on Mondays, everybody was talking about the Simpsons. Man, I was at church all day. I never got a chance to see it. And Living Color was coming on. I never got to see it. People talk about Saturday Night Live. I was at prayer. I never got to see it. That was one of the things of my unique past that was frustrating me. But it prepared me for this moment. Y'all getting this? This is making sense to y'all? So what's your, what's, what's your unique past? What's in it? And what are the unique experiences that you had? You see, well, what happens is, is we, we have experiences, whether they're good or bad, and we toss them to the side. But here's what I can tell you. If we were to go to war tomorrow, would you want to go with somebody that's had a ton of good experiences, the general, that's never been to war, or the battle-tested third three-year tour uh, general that's been overseas multiple times, right? Because the truth is, if you haven't been through nothing, you kind of haven't earned the right to, to, to teach anybody anything, right? Again, we said the word was passion, right? It's to suffer, sacrifice, to, to go through something. And now from that unique experience that makes you one of one and makes you different, that is the thing that gives you the certification, the credibility, the letters behind your name, right? To be able to teach what you did, right? And then the last thing was, one of the other things is, is who's your unique mentor? So for me, mine was Pastor Winfrey. And what I realized is that I mastered the art of communication. Right. How to understand how to how to how to be a good leader, how to manage different personalities, how to instill belief in people when they don't think that they're going to make it to next Sunday. When it's all going wrong and the last couple bucks people spent in, in uh, on gas to get there for some hope. Just to make it to the next day. You know, all those, all of those hours, four days a week, man, spent going to church. I missed out on so much stuff. But if I focused on that part, well, you know what also did? I lived in the south side of Chicago. That kept me from the fights after school. That kept me from the gang wars. That kept me from all the seen and unforeseen dangers, right? So my question is, is who, who was your unique mentor? Who poured into you, good or bad? You see, there is something positive we can take from every experience, good or bad. Now, this doesn't negate whether the experience was bad or not. I'm not, I'm not uh, negating that, but there's always something positive we can take from every experience. There's always something we can learn. Then the next thing is, what is your unique ability or skill set? Right? We talked about one of the keys to having influence is the mindset, tool set, and the skill set. So what is your unique skill set? What is your unique talent? This may be where most people need to start. It's because they don't have a unique ability or skill set. The way that you get this is you just get good at a thing. How do you get good at a thing? Practice, right? You want to develop mastery, doing the thing over and over and over again. So what is your unique talent? See, there's four levels of value, right? And the lowest level of value is implementation. And this is where you trade time for money. You go to work, you go to work, you go to work, you go to work. Do that same thing again. The next week, get paid. Right? This is where most people stay stuck their entire lives. Working to try to make a living just to get by. Living check to check. Then the second level is unification. And this is where you manage people. You manage their time while they implement the thing. You oversee to make sure that the thing gets done. Now, it's not implementation, but it's just a little bit better. But at the same time, you're still trading your time for money. So then the, <clears throat> the third level where this is where wealth starts to be created, this is called communication. So we got implementation, unification, and then we got communication. And this is where you use your mouth to make money to move the masses. And this is where wealth is created. That's why sales in general has made more millionaires than anything else, and especially in the insurance business. It's because when you use your mouth to solve problems, communicate value to people, 
When problems are solved, money is exchanged. And then the fourth level, which is imagination. So we got one of these. This single hand, this single-handed device has changed the way we live forever. So maybe back in the early 2000s, some crazy guy decided that I'm going to change the world. Well, this is going to be a calendar. It's going to be um, something where you could call somebody, but you probably get a response faster if you just type out something that takes longer and they got to read it, which takes more effort, right? You would probably get a response faster. It's going to be your bank. It's going to be your GPS. It's going to be your video camera, right? And people are going to spend a minimum of 48 hours scrolling through something every single day. Change the world. And that was imagination. And at the highest level of value is imagination. And this is where people use their mind and their money to make more money. Maybe 10 years ago, Cody's doing, um, you know, um, YouTube videos. And he's like, I want to start doing events. He went to the 10X conference and he got inspired. He had a vision. And from there, he uses imagination to create an event that has galvanized the insurance uh, industry. And Cody's unique ability and skill set is he's a center of influence. He's a connector. And that solves a lot of problems for people, which allows him to be known, which then gives him more opportunities. So the question is, is what is your unique skill set? What is your unique talent? And the last piece is, is how do we use our unique talent to solve a problem? So you want to take the right mindset with the right skill set. And then you want to package that into a tool set that you can use to solve a problem. So what happens when we solve problems? I want to see it in the chat. I want to see if anybody's pay paying attention. Thanks, Alexander. I appreciate you. What happens when we solve problems? Exactly, Iris. Appreciate it. Money ex exchanges hands. So how do we uncover your talents? Love. Man, love is such a powerful word. I love my kids and my wife. And being a parent and a husband. <laughs> There's a lot of passion that goes with that. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of pain that goes with that. See, when you love something, you're willing to die for it. You're willing to give up everything. You're willing to push all the chips in the middle. You're ready to bet it all on black or red. And if it all goes to zero, so be it. So what are the things that you love? Some of you are in this business for the wrong reasons, and that's why you're going up and down like this. You don't love it. You love the money. You don't love the people. You see, the people... Once you solve their problems, they're going to pay you for it. So you got to love the people. The people lead you to the money. You don't need more money. You need more people. So what do you love? What's your passion? What are you the best at? When it comes to marketing and sales, code is the best in the insurance game. Period. Point blank. He saw a need in the marketplace and he filled it. Everything was disjointed and disconnected. He's like, I'm going to bring this. I don't care what, what happens. I'm going to bring it together. All the slain, all the vitriol, all of the crazy stuff that goes on with it. I know he loves it because he <laughs> is going through a lot of passion. Right, Cody? A lot of suffering. Yes. It's because he loves it. And see, if you don't have any of these things, then the first question is, is what am I supposed to be doing? Is this the vehicle that I'm supposed to be in? So, so here's some of the assets that you can kind of to, to do to uncover. So I'm just going to do this exercise in front of you just to kind of help some folks going because the, the one of the biggest things that I noticed from showing up the webinars and going to seminars and going to masterminds, this is what 90% of the people do. And this is why they perpetually stay stuck and they end up on this endless cycle of just uh, gathering information and their life stays exactly the same. It's because they don't implement anything. I'm going to say that again. The reason why people stay stuck 
is because the only thing they the only vision that they have is in their mind. They never go from um, mental creation to physical action. So I'm going to go through this exercise with you. So what are some of the things that make you unique and relatable and desirable? What are some of the material things? Watch, cars, house, country club membership, own a big business, helped over a thousand agents, 50 have hit six and seven figures. They had a strong team, got a ton of happy clients, African-American, entrepreneur, I'm a coach and a Christian. I know Katina and Vernon are on here and they got a chance to, and Cody too, got a chance to come to um, Nashville and spend a few days with me. It's an amazing group of people that we're able to get in one room and something amazing happens when you get awesome people in the room, being a connector. Those are some of the assets. What are some of the advantages, right? The advantages are things that make you you that you're not, not your competitors. See, the thing is, is your story makes you unique in the shoes that you walk in, right? That's the thing that makes you one-on-one. -on -one, and we got to really focus on what those unique things are. We got to uncover those through all of the pain and the passion. Christian, African-American, entrepreneur, coach. See, these experiences right here is the thing that makes me unique, makes me a one-on-one. -on -one. And for the longest time, I didn't share any of this stuff or didn't talk about it before. And you know what happened? Everybody's like, well, you just sound like this person. You kind of like Cody. You kind of like Coach Burt. And it wasn't until I started really focusing on who I was and then covering this. It's like, man, I am unique. I'm different. I'm the only one in the space with the right, with this mindset, this skill set, and this tool set. Entrepreneur, my life experience about what I do. And you guys heard my story. And that's what makes me unique, my, your journey, my, my journey. Um, last piece to that is, is, man, when I was going through the insurance process back in 2004, I didn't realize that my grandfather was a debit man. My mother used to always tell me she used to get frustrated because they used to all load up in the station wagon. She had six brothers and sisters. And every time they wanted to go to the drive-in, which is where you just go in Chicago and you pull up with your car and you pack up, you go to the dollar store beforehand, you pack up your cooler. Right. And then they put these little microphones from a, a big screen that's outside and you just hook it inside your car. You pay like three to five bucks. This is back when we were poor. And we would just bring some blankets and we would watch movies in a car because we couldn't all afford to go to, to the movie theater. And at that time, my grandmother used to always complain because my grandfather had to stop at somebody's house before we always went to go before they all had to go and do something. And that's when I realized, oh, he was a debit man. He would sell insurance. And then he had to go back to the house to co collect those premiums in order to be able to pay for stuff. Isn't that crazy? So insurance has been in my blood for a long time. That's a, a, a unique experience. So from that, you can start to make content and find channels. And so what, what, what content would you post? And I'm talking about content. Now it's like, oh, ooh, now you want me to do something with all of this stuff? You want me to share it with people? You want me to be vulnerable? Whew. Now you want me to take action? Yeah. Right? You want to do some content. What kind of content speaks to your audience? What's your story? Share that story. See, what happens when you share your story is, is if you don't give people context, they will assume things about you that, that they'll relate to you unless you give them something to relate to. Right? So when you share your story, it may not be the most important thing about you but it's the most important thing that you want people to know about you. I'm going to say that one more time. Your story may not be the most important thing about you, but it's the most important thing that you want people to know about you. This is why you got to share your story. So what's your why? Insurance agents, y'all miss this one all the time. What's your why? Nobody cares what you know until they know why you care. What's your why? Why did you get an insurance in the first place? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you sitting in front of me, Mr. Insurance person? Why are you trying to sell me a product? Why are you trying to get my money? What's your why? Why are you doing this? What impacted you in your life that made you decide that you wanted to be someone that sells insurance? There's no insurance school. Nobody graduated from insurance university. So why did you choose this path? Right. And what happens is, is when you tell your story and you share your why, you know what happens? This humanizes you. 
See, a lot of times we're talking about A-rated characters and all of this mumbo jumbo and this and that. And nobody cares a lick about any of that. The only thing I want to know is, Cody, when you sit down in front of me, is this going to protect my family? If something were to happen to me, is this going to leave something behind as opposed to a bill? And I want to know if I can trust you. I want to know if you're here in my home or in my home on Zoom trying to get my money so that you can make the next sale. All right. Is this making sense to y'all? I'm getting this. Put put a three in the chat if this is making sense to y'all. I'm going kind of deep. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Irish. Lynn, appreciate you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Roxanne. Okay, so let's keep going. We're almost done. So what are the top five misconceptions that most people have about the product that you sell? What are the top five misconceptions that most people have about the product that you sell? I can't tell you how many times you have a conversation with somebody about life insurance and they don't know anything about living benefits. The only thing people think is that life insurance is, is for you when you die. And that alone is a major key selling point. So why aren't we sharing that and telling more people and posting that, making blogs about it and sharing that information even more? What are some other misconceptions about the products that you sell? See, when you start to educate people about the misconceptions, and you change the perception of it is that what you do, now you have control of the narrative. And what happens is, is when you educate people, guess what? Now you're seen as the go-to authority. So when people's got questions about things or they, it comes across them where it's a time they have an occurrence in their life that they may need to get something buttoned up, they'll remember when you posted, when you shared, when you talked about X, Y, and Z, and they'll come to you. At the beginning, we all said that we wanted to stop chasing business and have business chasing us. Well, this is how you do it. The next thing is, um, uh, this is saying, don't get mad at it. Don't get mad with it, get paid with it. So, no, don't get mad with it, get paid for it. So one of the biggest things I tell all my clients is, is when you have a conversation with somebody and it's kind of a dog fight and it kind of goes south and you're pissed, that's the perfect time to pull out your phone and make an a, a education video about something to educate the next person. See, what happens when you start to handle objections ahead of time and you put them out there, guess what happens when you educate somebody about your story, you educate them about your why, you tell them the five misconceptions about things that they um, that they believe to be true that are false, that they can benefit from, and then you handle the top five objections before somebody has a conversation with you. Do you think that's going to be a better conversation as opposed to picking up a list and dialing some leads that are cold? Yes or no? Type yes or no in the chat. If you talk to somebody on the phone, they they know your story, they know your why, you've already handled the top five misconceptions of, about your product that they didn't know that can benefit them, and they they uh, you've already uh, addressed the top five objections that you get over and over again in the in the sales presentation. Is that going to be a better call? One hundred percent. Thank you, Olga. I appreciate that. Another thing. Right. We, everybody subscribe to the what's uh, in it for them. Right. What are the five benefits of the product that most people don't know? What are those benefits? It's the same way to, to preframe the, the, the other question. It's just the way to package it differently. What are the benefits that most people don't know? And then last one, probably my favorite is what are the five biggest uh, reasons what rich people use your product? These are the five reasons um, that the rich people don't want you to know how to use this for taxes, for legacy, wealth, right? It's a loophole. It's an insurance policy attached with the internal uh, like savings account. This allows them to do X, Y, and Z. If you ever read the, bo the, the book, um, what would the Rockefellers do, right? Infinite banking. See, the secrets of the rich, everybody wants to do that. Because, see, everybody wants to do what <laughs> wealthy people are doing. And nobody wants to do what broke people are doing. So it's an easy way to get people's attention with this. So it was like, well, Arturo, man, I'm not really a social media person. I don't know where to go. I got you. I got those people like that. Some And the one, somebody in the chat is like, I'm not a really social media person. It's, you know, I don't really post that much. Put a one in the chat. So I don't know where to kind of get some of this stuff or where to get, get started. Well, so here's what you can do. 
right? You can go online and you can search for topics. Mainly TikTok is probably the best one where you can search for products and see what other videos have gone viral. And this will give you an idea of how to create content. And then you can take that idea. You can pop it in the chat GPT and say, give me 10 to 20 headlines and hooks and stories on how to talk about X, Y, X, Y, and Z. And see, the, uh, Cody has been doing this for the last two, three months, and I don't think people are getting it. Well, he's like, just tell me a word. And then he just, we call it Jay-Z, and where he just does one take about a video. And see, what most people don't really understand is that they're waiting for somebody to um, give them um, the credentials or to convince them to become an expert. Well, that day is over because you all have been awarded expertise to talk about the field and what you work in. So that gives you the authority that you're fighting to help people to now start talking about it and educating people before. Because there's, there's two things going to happen. One, you can educate people before they hop on a call with you, or you can spend your time in the sales presentation, educating and arguing with folks. You choose. Which one do you want? Do you want to talk to people that understand, know who you are, humanize you, that they understand the value of what it is that you have the offer, product, or service, and they're open to having a conversation about it? Or do you want to spend your time beating your head up against the wall trying to convince people why they need this? You got two options. And so the way that you can find these topics is you can just go on TikTok and search and they'll, just, they'll show you. Whatever it is, life insurance, health insurance, um, debt collection, um, anything financial, you can find all of that stuff on there. And, and what happens is it opens your eyes. It's like, man, this thing is, has three four, five, six million views. And this person isn't even good at it. So if they can do it, then you can do it. And the only difference is they just start putting it out there. So then once you do that, then you want to pick a channel, Facebook, uh, Facebook business page, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube. And then this is probably the most important thing, like I said, just take massive action. You want to create a video every day for the next 30 days. Remember I said that whole thing about mastery? See, the first time you create a video, it's going to suck. And it's okay. Go back and look at my uh, initial videos. When I had on a too big of a suit with some terrible lighting over here uh, and, and the, in the dark corner, people laughed at me. But that was okay because I knew where I was going. I knew that the worst I was going to be was today. And if, uh, if the only thing I did was didn't quit, guess what? There was nothing that could stop me. So there's something powerful about the consistency that you get from um, doing something every single day that you get this thing called momentum. I love principles, right? An object in motion stays in motion until it's acted upon by outside and opposing force. So if you're consistently creating videos every single day and they don't got to be long, 30 to 60 seconds, right? That's why the short the stories are, are short. So you can create one every single day. At some point, guess what? Somebody's going to raise their hand. They're going to hop in your DM. They're going to send you a comment, right? Uh, they're going to comment under your video. They're going to like something. They're going to reach out and say, hey, I didn't know that about health insurance or life insurance or Medicare. My mom needs some help with that. My dad just went through this X, Y, and Z. That's kind of on my mind. I almost got an, I almost got ran off the road by a truck last night. I've been me got a couple applications I've been meaning to fill out. I need to talk to you about this. See, our problem is, is we're not findable with solutions that we have to in front of the people that have problems. Let that sink in. So first video that you do is going to suck, but it doesn't matter. And you'll get better over time. And this is more about consistency and momentum than anything else. And over time, you'll gain momentum and leads will start to come to you. One of the biggest things I love about fitness people is we just do we take action we wake up we soar i think cody had <laughs> like the 102 fever throwing up this and that there's a video of him still doing 100 push-ups see the cool thing about working out is, is that you're sore and you're tired we we don't want to do it just like anybody else but it doesn't matter what we feel like we get it done anyway taking action in spite of your feelings is discipline so get used to taking action in spite of the results. Inky Johnson says, you can see where a man's heart is when it's not working out for him, when it's all going wrong. 
when you see how much he really loves and how much passion he has, when he removes his attachment from the outcome and he knows that he has a duty and he does the work in spite of the results. See, when you're solving problems, sometimes it's going to go wrong. Sometimes it's not going to go well. But if you don't remember why you're doing what you're doing, you're going to give up. You're going to cut corners. You're going to stop. You're going to take long lunches. You're going to say, I'm going to call them at three because they're probably doing X, Y, and Z. You're going to use any excuse to take out the trash and wash the dishes. To call your friends back, to, to check voicemails, to start uh, calling carriers or watching YouTube videos about CRMs. So you got to get, again, this is a principle. Get used to taking action in spite of the results. So once you do that, right, you can then um, take this content that's going viral on your pages, which some of them do, and then you can turn those into advertising. Because what you're doing is you're putting little organic ads out there. And now this is how you can scale your business. Because if it works, if it works at a small scale, it'll work at a large scale. That's another principle called fractals. So once you figured out your voice, which is why you want to uh, do this for 30 days, one of your posts will have gone viral and then you can reach out to us if you need some help. You reach out to Cody, right? He can show you how you can 10X, right? And get an ROS, which is the return on lead spend. So um, hope this was helpful and insightful. Um, Coach Bert and I are doing a free webinar that'll go into depth of this for like two hours. I only had like 30, 40 minutes. So I didn't want to bombard you with this, but we got another free webinar where we'll be kind of going over some of this stuff in depth for the brevity and sake of your time. And plus, I got to pop out of here to go uh, take my kids to have some fun in the playground. But if anybody is interested in going a little bit deeper, I mean, it's free. There's nothing here. We're not selling anything, but we're going more in depth on this topic specifically. And a lot of this stuff I learned from Coach Burt, uh, which is pretty eye opening. You know, and so if anybody wants to go deeper and learn a little bit more next week on um, October the 17th at 3 p.m., I think that's what this says, we'll be going into depth a little bit more on um, how to become a sender influence. Uh, hope this has been valuable. Thank you guys for your attention. Um, God bless. Let me know if y'all have any questions. All right, all right. You still got it, bro. You still got it. Man, I'm learning from watching you, bro. He's lighting it up, man. Look at look, look at these comments, man. How about him from Arturo Johnson? Let's go, man. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Yes, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me, brother. I really appreciate it. Thank you for getting this group together. This is pretty cool. I, it's funny. I was kind of tired before. I popped on here, but now, man, I'm re-energized. It's, it's, again, it's about getting around the right people. You get around people, you get energized, right? True. You know, I'm talking about, man, I got this going on. Cody's like, bro, you don't even know. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm moving office. I'm, you know, got tours coming up. And so yep. it's pretty awesome. I'm actually about to, uh, I was telling our crew earlier on a call that I am actually going to be um, adding IUL sells into my I'm going to actually like go back and sell insurance for 25 hours a week just for the fun of it make some content around it so see that's what I'm saying man's already busy now he's talking about getting back on the grind and doing something yeah, yeah for sure we could always awesome. be doing more that's for sure good amen to that bro no doubt about it but I appreciate you being on buddy have an amazing night Thank you all for chilling with us. Have an amazing week, and we'll see you next time. Okay, appreciate you all. Thanks. Peace. See you, buddy.